Good day to everyone. So we are now on the continuation of the incorporation process of incorporation, specifically in the organization of a certain corporation. So let's begin with the shares of stocks. Under the shares of stocks, we have this doctrine of equality of shares. So what does this mean? So where the articles of incorporation do not provide for any distinction of the shares of stocks, all shares issued by the corporation are presumed to be equal and enjoy the same rights and privileges and are also subject to the same liabilities. Okay, if wala po siyang distinction as to what type of shares yung i-issue ng, ano, ng corporation, then uh, this would mean that all shares have equal rights and privileges. So, this is the case if ever hindi natin siya na-classify as to common shares or preferred shares or any types of shares. So, if hindi na-state, then it, uh, all the shares of stocks could have the same equal rights and privileges. So, we have different classes of shares. Actually, the first one is par and no par value of shares. When we say par value of shares, these are shares with value fixed in the certificate of stock in the Articles of Incorporation. So here, nakalagay talaga siya sa certificate of stock at saka sa AOI natin that the company is issuing a par value shares. So we have also no par value shares which are the complete opposite of the par value. These are shares having no par value but have issued value stated in the certificate. But may limitations po yung no par value of shares natin. So the first is, no par value of shares cannot have an issued price less than 5 pesos. So we have to take note of this. Wala, hindi po dapat siya bababa na 5 pesos. So the entire consideration for its issue once constitute capital so that no part of it should be distributed as dividends. They cannot issued as preferred stocks. Kapag may mga no par value shares po tayo, they cannot be issued preferred stocks. Uh, one of the privileges of a preferred stock, okay, bibigyan ko kayo ng a little bit of insight about this preferred stock. It's just that uh, kapag preferred stock yung initial ninyo, you will be enjoying a privilege uh, of, for example, you will be prioritized in the declaration of dividends. So you will be the one to first receive your dividends as to your, as to preference shares. Okay, so ayan. But if it case, no par value of shares tayo, hindi po tayo po allowed mag-issue ng preferred stocks. They cannot also be issued by banks, trust companies, insurance companies, public utilities, and building and loan associations. So these are financing companies. So bawal po yung no par value shares. The, art the articles of incorporation must state the fact that it issued no par value shares as well as the number of the said shares. And once issued, they are deemed fully paid and non-accessible. So that is the first class of the shares, par value and no par value of shares. So the next type of share is voting and non-voting shares. From the word itself, voting shares have the right to vote and non-voting shares are shares that don't have the right to vote. So under the law, okay, it authorizes the denial of voting rights in case of redeemable shares and preferred shares provided that there shall always be a class or series of shares which have complete voting rights. So therefore, under the law, hindi po allowed, okay, or wala pong voting rights, redeemable shares, and preferred shares. But hindi naman sa lahat, okay, hindi naman, naman sa lahat ng aspeto ng corporation decisions. Wala silang voting rights. But, that's the general rule. So in every general rule, there's an exception. So to continue, holders of non-voting shares shall never be the, shall nevertheless be entitled to vote on the following matters. Therefore, in spite of having no voting rights, they may be entitled to vote on these matters. For example, amendment of articles of incorporation, so they can vote. Okay. Next is adoption and amendment of bylaws. The sale, lease, exchange, mortgage, pledge, or other disposition of all or substantially all of the corporate property, incurring, creating, or increasing bonded indebtedness, 
merger or consolidation of the corporation with another corporation or other corporations, investment of corporate funds in another corporation or business in accordance with the code and dissolution of the corporation. So if as so what we can observe, these are decisions or major decisions of the corporation. Therefore, even though that prefer the redeemable shares to have non-voting shares, but with regards to these major decision making that the corporation is trying to implement so pwede po silang bumoto they have the a voting rights on these certain matters particularly the those that were enumerated in this figure the next type of share is common and preferred shares we'll begin with the common shares when we say common shares, this is the basic class of stock ordinarily and usually issued without extraordinary rights and privileges in the owners thereof are entitled to a pro rata share in profits of the corporation and its assets upon dissolution, likewise in the management of its affair without preference or advantage whatsoever. So from the word it's a common basic class of stocks lang siya as compared to the other which is preferred shares. Okay, so we'll continue um, discussing the preferred shares on the next slide. The next one is the preferred shares. So when we say preferred shares, those given preference in the distribution of dividends and in distribution of corporate assets in case of liquidation or such other preference provided that preferred shares of stock may be issued only at a stated or par value. So ayan they could only be issued with a stated or power value and the board of directors were authorized in the articles of incorporation may fix the terms and conditions of the preferred shares so only the board of directors were authorized for this one okay and such terms and conditions shall be effective upon filing of the certificate thereof with the securities and exchange commission so ito yung pinagkaiba nila sa common shares where common shares don't, don't have any privileges or special uh, privilege but here when we say preferred shares you are given preference as to the div distribution of dividends distribution of corporate assets if ever uh the corporations and liquidations but they ha we have certain um Regula regulations about preferred shares. Yun yung binasa ko kanina. So, yun lang naman yung pinaka-main difference ng dalawang shares na yan as to common and preferred shares. But here, to continue, we have limitations on the preferred shares. First one is, if defined from by of voting rights, it shall still be entitled to vote on the matters related to Section 6, Paragraph 6. Yun yung binasa ko kanina. For example, they have the right to vote on a certain major decision okay, in a corporate matters. Next is preference must not be violative of the code. It may be issued only with a started or stated part value and the board of directors may fix the terms and conditions only when so authorized in the articles of incorporation. Therefore, magbabase pa din tayo sa AOI natin if uh, if nakastate doon that the board of directors are given authorization to fix the terms and conditions for the preferred share, then it could be. Okay? So, pwede po nilang is a fix in as long as it was stated in the AOI. Unless the right to vote is stated clearly or clearly withheld, a preferred stockholder has the right to vote. And preference upon liquidation must be clearly indicated. Otherwise, they shall be placed on equal footing with the other shares. So, it must be indicated. Okay, their preference must be indicated to the AOI. So, if it is not indicated because you are not fixed by the board of directors authorized in the articles of incorporation, then magiging effect niyan, but they have just an equal footing with the other shares. For example, common. So, mawawala yung preference nila over to some privileges of the corporation. So, that's preferred shares. Next is the redeemable shares. So, when we say the redeemable shares, this may be issued by the corporation when expressly provided in the articles of incorporation. Take note of that. Okay. A corporation 
uh, can be allowed to issue this share if it is stated in the AOI. So they are shares which may be purchased by the corporation from the holders of such shares upon the expiration of a fixed period regardless of the existence of unrestricted retained earnings in the books of the corporation and upon such other terms and conditions stated in the AOI, the certificate of stock representing the shares subject to rules and regulations issued by the commission so that is redeemable shares okay so these are shares that are redeemable at a certain or fixed determinate determinable future time okay so they we have limitations on the redeemable shares redeemable shares may be issued only when expressly provided in the aoi so that's one of the important matters that we need to um, bear in mind kapag redeemable shares Next is the terms and conditions affecting the said shares must be stated in both AOI and in the certificates of stock representing such shares. So when we say certificates of stock, these are ownership actually. Okay, these are certification of ownership that you as a stockholders own a certain type of share in that particular corporation. Next is redeemable shares may be deprived of voting rights. Same with the preference shares in the AOI unless otherwise provided in the code. Okay, so remember these are just general rule, pero meron naman silang voting rights as to the major decision of the corporate matters. Okay, so that's redeemable shares. Next is the treasury shares. When we say treasury shares, these are shares of stocks which have been issued and fully paid for but subsequently reacquired by the issuing corporation through purchase, redemption, donation, or some other lawful means. Such shares may again be disposed for a reasonable price fixed by the board of directors. Now, if it, if it is purchased from stockholders, the transaction is effect is a return to the stockholders the value of their investment in the company and a reversion of the shares of the corporation. So the corporation must have surplus profits with which to buy the shares so that the transaction will not cause an impairment of the capital. So ito yung nagiging ano kasi, paano ba nagkakaroon or nagkikreate ng treasury shares? Actually shares, these shares are uh, previously been issued Okay, initial or sinubscribe siya ng isang corp, uh, subscriber or shareholder but remain unpaid or delinquent for a long period of time. So, they are given notice or grace period to pay the delinquent one. So, if they defaulted on the, delin uh, on the due date given to them or grace period, then the shares will be up for bidding. So, whoever... Uh, the highest bidder from the bidding process will own the shares. But if ever wala pong nakita ng highest bidder si corporation, then the corporation will buy their own shares. Kaya siya naging treasury shares. Kaya naman, if nabin, nabili ng corporation from a stockholder, okay, who is a delinquent stockholder, okay, so dapat, meron silang surplus profits in which doon na kukunin yung uh, pambayad nila okay okay to buy the shares so that the transaction will not cause an impairment of the capital what if acquired by donation from the stockholders so the act would amount to surrender of their stock without getting back their investment so para talaga siyang nature ng donation that are instead voluntarily given to the corporation. So that is the concept of treasury shares. The next one is the founder shares. Okay, these are shares issued to organizers and promoters of a corporation in consideration of some supposed right or property. So shares are classified as such in the articles of incorporation, may be given special preference in voting rights and dividend payments. But if an exclusive right to vote and be voted for as a director is granted, this privilege is subject to the approval by the SEC and cannot exceed five years from the date of approval.
approval. So, these are founder shares. Okay? So, binibigay siya or ini-issue siya sa mga organizers or yung promoter mismo. Okay? Those that promotes the corporation at the beginning. Okay? So, ayan. So, it must be classified in the AOI para mabigyan sila ng special preference in voting rights and dividend payments. But, this exclusive right, okay, must seek an approval with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Pero hindi po dapat siya mag i ng 5 years if na-aprobahan na ng SEC. So, from the date of approval po yung counting ng 5 years natin. The next one is screw stock. So, these are deposited with a third person. So, other than our corporation. So, to be delivered to a stockholder or his assigned after complying a certain conditions. Usually, payment of full subscription price. We are now on the commencement of corporate existence. So, it is only from the time that the issuance of the certificate of incorporation that the corporation acquires juridical personality and legal existence. So, prior to incorporation, a corporation has no juridical personality to enter into contracts. Therefore, okay, for a corporation to legally commence its operation, kailangan muna, they will be issued, okay, a certificate from the SEC or Securities and Exchange Commission, okay, uh, to legally commence their operation. So after require uh, after complying with all the requirements of the SEC, we begin sila ng license to operate or the primary franchise and the secondary franchise for them to freely operate its operation. So that's how a corporation can commence its corporate existence. Now, if ever. Uh, the corporation would like to amend the Articles of Incorporation, meaning they would like to, re uh, to revise a portion of it. So therefore, uh, there's a procedure on how to amend these Articles of Incorporation. We all know that Articles of Incorporation are a set of formal documents filed with a government body to legally document the creation of a corporation. So, Articles of Incorporation generally contain pertinent information, Yung mga firm's names nila, street address, agent for service or process, and any amount and type of stock to be issued. So, it was already discussed on the previous topics. So, now, what if they are going to amend? So, there's the procedure in amending the Articles of Incorporation. First one is for the stock corporation. If it is a stock corporation, there must be a resolution by at least a majority vote of the board of directors. So, majority po of the directors or trustees and vote or written assent of the stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. So, we need two uh, types here of votation, majority vote ng BOD plus two-thirds vote of the OCS, okay, or stockholders representing at least two-thirds votes in the outstanding capital stock. But if in case of non-stock corporation, there must be a resolution by at least majority vote of the trustees in vote or written assent of at least two-thirds of the members, okay? So, after the votings or the voting requirements, there must be a submission and these submissions must be filed with the SEC or Securities and Exchange Commission of the original and the amendment articles together shall contain all provisions required by the law to be set out in the Articles of Incorporation. Amendments to the articles shall be indicated by underscoring the change or changes made. So, yeah, underscore nila. They need to uh, send the original one and the amended one. Pero yung sa amended... Okay, naka-underscore po yun or naka-emphasize po yung na-change na part ng AO, uh, AOI. Okay, so that's Articles of Incorporation. There must be a copy thereof duly certified under oath by the corporate secretary. Tandaan ito, and majority of the directors or trustees with a statement that the amendments have been duly approved by the required votes. Yung sinabi natin kanina na two-thirds vote of the majority of the BOD or member or the trustees plus two-thirds uh, vote of the OCS or members. Okay, so favorable, uh, next one is favorable recommendation of the appropriate government agency concerned if it is required by law. 
Okay, so yun po yung uh, procedures in the amendment of articles of incorporation. Okay. To continue with the amendments of articles of incorporation, so the approval, the amendments shall take effect up, uh, upon their approval by the commission or from the date of filing with the said commission if not acted upon within six months from the date of filing or cause or for a cause not attributable to the corporation. So it, uh, the effectivity of this is under approval by the SEC, okay, within six months from the date Okay, for a cost that attributable to the corporation. So, always remember the approval. Next, what are the grounds to reject the or reject or disapproval of the amendments of the AOI? So, we have the following items. So, for it to be rejected or disapproved, the articles of incorporation or any amendment thereto are not substantially Okay, in accordance with the form prescribed therein. So, hindi po siya nagpalo ng prescribed form. Okay, so it could be rejected or disapproved. The purpose or purposes of the corporation are patently unconstitutional, okay, and unconsiderate, illegal, immoral, or contrary to the government rules and regulations. So, meron siyang violation with the, with the regulations set forth by the government. So, it could be disapproved or rejected. The certification concerning the amount of capital stock subscribed and or is paid is false. There was a false information regarding to the subscribed capital stocks. Okay. Next is the required percentage of Filipino ownership. Ayun, has not been complied with so we already all uh, know that that there are some corporations who has um, a Filipino foreign ownership requirements for it to be approved next the amendment of AOI of banks banking and quasi banking institution pre-need insurance and trust companies pawn shops and other financial intermediaries shall be approved by the commission unless accompanied by a favorable recommendation of the appropriate government agency to that effect of such articles or amendment in accordance with the law. If there is no recommendation or favorable recommendation of the appropriate government agency indicated with those uh, corp type of corporations set forth above, uh, it could be a grounds for injection or disapproval by the SEC. So, there you have it, the grounds for rejection and disapproval and as well as the approval of the amendments of Articles of Incorporation. And we are now going to proceed with the non-use of corporate charter in continuous in operation of incorporation. But before we proceed with number one, okay, let me add to you, if the corporation will become inoperative for at least two years, the corporation shall be deemed dissolved if it does not formally organize, commence the transaction of its business or the construction of its works within two years from the date of its incorporation unless the same is due to causes beyond the control of the corporation as, the, as may be determined by the SEC. So, if hindi ka nag-formal organize ng business mo, Okay, so may chance na madidissolve yung corporation. Okay, after two years, okay, or within two years, formal organization includes the adoption of bylaws and filing the same with the SEC, election of directors, organizational meeting of directors to elect the president, secretary, treasurer, and other officers provided by the bylaws. So therefore, if none of these items presented to you or binigyan, uh, binasa ko kanina or binigay is not yet okay up, accomplished then may possibility talaga na madissolve yung corporation however what's the effect if uh, hindi lang 2 years kundi 5 years okay so if a corporation does not formally organize and commence its business within 5 years from the date of its incorporation its certificate of incorporation shall be deemed revoked as of the day following the end of the 5 year period kung kanina kung 2 years nang din dissolve ito din revoke, marirevoke na talaga yung Certificate of Incorporation um, given by the SEC. However, if a corporation has commenced its business but subsequently becomes inoperative for at least 5 years, okay, 5 consecutive years, nag-operate naman, pero after that, okay, hindi na siya in, uh, inoper inoperative na siya for 
a consecutive of five years. The commission may, after due notice and hearing, so dadaan pa siya ng notice at saka hearing or investigation. So if ever, uh, nalaman talaga ng SEC na inoperative talaga siya, okay, the place of incorporation under delinquent status. So ilalagay siya or i-place siya under delinquent status. A delinquent corporation still have a period of two years to resume its operations. So, bibigyan sila ng period of two years or grace period to comply with all the requirements that the commission shall prescribe. So, upon compliance with the corporation, the commission shall issue an order lifting the delinquent status. Failure to comply with the requirements and resume operations within the period given by the commission shall cause the revocation of the corporation certificate of incorporation. So, klarong-klaro tayo dyan. Let me summarize to you. If inoperative siya for two years, dissolve lang po ang corporation, but they still have the chance to improve its operation or para makapag-start na sila ng formal organization. Okay. However, if five years naman talaga, okay, pwede siyang ma-revoke yung certificate. However, if yung case is nag-operate naman sila, but they subsequently they become inoperative for five consecutive years, magiging delinquent corporation ka, or you will be placed under delinquent status. So, you will be given a grace period of two years to resume the operations to comply the formal organization. So, if after... Um, that, if hindi pa talaga, okay, it will really cause revocation na of the corporation's certificate of incorporation. Next is ultra-virus doctrine. So, what is ultra-virus doctrine? The ultra-virus doctrine deals with the corporate entity to validly enter into contracts and transactions. These are acts done by the corporation outside by the express and implied powers vested in it by its charter and by the law. It is an act committed outside the object for which the corporation is created as defined by the law of its organization and therefore beyond the powers conferred upon it by law. So, ultra virus are beyond the powers, refers only to act outside beyond the corporate powers, including those that may ostensibly be within such powers, but are, be general or special laws, either prohibited or declared illegal. Therefore, ultra virus doctrine are not illegal one, okay, illegal acts, but they are just beyond the powers of the corporation. So, we all know that the corporation has vested with its express powers and specific powers wherein it will serve as a guide na yun lang yung mga rights and privileges na pwedeng gawin ng corporation. Beyond the power will be considered ultra virus doctrine. An ultra virus act may be that of the corporation itself, the board of directors may ginawang beyond the control or beyond the powers, yung BOD at saka yung mga corporate officers natin. So, ultra virus act of the corporation cannot be ratified by itself, but an ultra virus act of a corporate officer may be ratified by the corporation. It could be ratified naman. Pero, just let us uh, just to make things clear, ultra virus are not illegal, but they are just beyond the powers which are expressly uh, stated okay, as powers of the corporation, may mapa express man or specific powers. Okay? Let's proceed to the types of ultra virus act. Okay, so the types of ultra virus act are acts done beyond the powers of the corporation as provided by the law of its articles of incorporation. Next is acts or contracts entered into on behalf of the corporation by persons who have no corporate authority. So they act on behalf of the corporation at the the one who is acting has no corporate authority. And acts or contracts which are per se illegal as being contrary to law. Per se lang yan, ha? Okay? So, we have a distinction between ultra virus act and illegal acts. So, as to nature, ultra virus act, not necessarily unlawful, okay? But outside the powers of the organization, while illegal, is it's unlawful talaga. It's against the law, morals, public order, and public policy. As to susceptibility of ratification, ultra virus generally can be ratified, can be corrected, okay, or expressly or impliedly by the stockholders because such acts are merely voidable. 
Okay, voidable kasi siya. They, because these are beyond the powers of the corporation. Okay, but here, in illegal acts, cannot be ratified because they are void ab initio. They are void from the very beginning because it is contrary to law, morals, public order, and public policy. As to binding effect, ultra-virus acts can bind the parties if fully or partly executed on the basis of estopel. So, it could bind the uh, corporation, but in illegal acts, cannot bind both parties because at the beginning, it is void ab initio. Okay, or void. So, those are the illegal uh, types of uh, illegal and ultra-virus distinction and the types of ultra-virus acts. So, I hope that you've learned a lot from this topic and the our next discussion is all about the powers of the corporation. So, stay tuned for more updates for the continuation of the law on corporation.